Today I will be explaining what an NFT is the way I would to a friend because last week I sat down with someone who really didn't understand NFTs and didn't understand why the hype is so hard with it. I have to be honest it took me literally a year to understand it and I've been in crypto for like four years now but once I understood it I kind of understood the hype even though I'm not backing the hype myself I'm more into the future of what it is. I actually met last week the founder of Polygon which is the crypto coin Matic and I really loved his interpretation of the future of uh, the cryptocurrency space and what will happen and how NFT will obviously play a role in that but isn't really necessary as much as you will find out other examples in stories that I will share. So with that being said let's jump straight into it which is first of all what are kind of NFTs and why are they so important? Well I'll illustrate that with a story. Maybe you've ever gone club or gone to a lounge or some type of club where you needed some membership card. Now when we're talking in the blockchain you can't really have membership cards that are physical. You can't really like scan your ID card or something and in general you probably don't want to because the blockchain is all about being anonymous and decentralized. So maybe you've gone to a club and then at the entrance you have to pay like let's say 10 bucks but if you get this membership card next time which by the way the, the card itself is like 10 bucks on top of your entry ticket but the next time you will pay like a 20% discount when you enter again uh, and of course show this card. Well in the blockchain when you think about decentralized and anonymous you kind of want to create a similar experience when you have a community or some type of exclusive event or something interesting happening and that's where those NFTs come in. The NFTs aren't specifically the image it's the code behind it and then you couple an image to that and that's why it gets so much bad rep because that image could technically be anything and it could even be something that the person who created the code does not own and that's why you have to focus on the fact that an NFT is that specific code it's not the image exactly although and that's what I want to jump into uh, the Everything that I pretty much learned in the last couple of, I would say, months for me to get to a point where I would understand NFTs gets summarized in actually two things. You can have NFTs that are specific for art, so there isn't really a utility. Just like when you go to a museum and you look at an art piece, the whole point of art, which I actually studied uh, in, in my high school, the whole point of art is that there is no point. It's pure for enjoyment. And so you have an aspect to the NFTs where there's like the art part. But the second part is the utility part. That There's an actual utility to it, which I illustrated with the whole story of the clubs. And I'll dive deeper into that. But before I dive deeper into the second part, I want to illustrate the first part, which is the art part. Because a lot of people that look at NFTs kind of right now, they're focusing on that first part, which is kind of the short term, the art part, like you create an NFT and you sell it for a bunch of money and then you have like a nice image that you can put on Twitter. Well, so NFTs aren't specifically that, but one of the, one of the necessities that you have in that part is you have a lot of artists. Uh, so like I said, I was in this conference in Dubai and we had a lot of people from Africa and Asia come in and you notice that they have have much harder access to like the Western world and promoting themselves um, and, and so you have these artists based in Nigeria for instance that make amazing art but don't have access to these galleries in New York or San Francisco or something like that and so one of the ways that they're democratizing art and allowing these Nigerian artists to make like I saw some of these art pieces, like 3D art pieces, and they're stunning. But so to democratize, you know, that Nigerian artist versus a New York artist, you have these NFT codes where you couple that image and you can see who the original owner is. So one of the things, for instance, you go to museums and a lot of experts say that mo maybe not most, but a lot of important pieces are actually really good fake ones. And the actual paintings are probably uh, with some criminal person who stole the art piece and it's, it's hanging in their living room uh, and you will never know what the original is. All these experts they're mostly guessing based on their expertise and the history and everything that they uh, discovered but with NFTs you have that piece of code that will track everything and when ownership passes through so you will always kind of see the original 
artist, the original owner, and so that's how you can verify that that piece of art is real and who the owner is. So that's already a huge thing for democratizing art, which of course a lot of people are getting like hyped up around and they think, oh, we'll start doing all these virtual museums and then somehow we'll, you know, work on making money by creating like the next Rembrandt or Rubens painting that makes us like millions of uh, dollars. So on the one side, it's, it's a bit too hyped for me, but there's a lot of utility in democratizing. And that's why uh, people that actually are in the crypto space are really huge, huge, huge proponents of that piece already. But that is not specifically the future of crypto. And that's where kind of the whole hype and the media stops. Because the second part is utility NFTs. And utility NFTs, like I illustrated in my original story, is about having this piece of code that actually gives some type of utility. I'll give you one example. I'm invested in a project called Strong. It's not doing very well, but uh, I'll use them as an example because they're one of the original ones in crypto nodes. And one of the things that they did is as they were raising money, they would sell these nodes as a service projects. Nodes is something that you need to run on the blockchain and stuff like that, but we're not diving into that today. Uh, so as they were raising um, money for the nodes, they have to actually maintain the nodes. That costs money. But one of the other ways that as a startup they could raise money is by creating NFTs. And when they would sell NFTs, it pretty much doesn't cost them anything, gets them a lot of money. But in return, they would offer the original people that got in uh, to Strong, they would offer them a boost in their rewards. Because if you would set up a note, then you would actually get passive income back. But in order to get more passive income, you could buy an NFT and then get a 10% boost or a 20% boost or something like that. So not only does this NFT give you kind of the membership that you're one of the original investors, it also gives you the utility that you are making a boost on your passive income. And so now as an early investor, let's say, let's say you're investing outside of crypto space, you're investing in early startups, right? They have to raise money as well. And you believe in the team and you believe that as things go wrong, they will probably pivot and kind of go from there, raise more funding, get more experienced people in and somehow grow through that. Well, how do you know that you are the early investor? Maybe you're going 20 years later on stage and you're saying, I was one of the first investors in Uber. But how do you know? Well, so the NFTs that were uh, maybe released in the beginning stages, like with StrongBlock, uh, those could actually prove that you're one of those early investors. And so not only would you reap benefits from that boost in the NFT, so the utility of boosting your rewards, you would also own this token. Or maybe you're just tired with Strong strong block because I don't know it's crashing or something you're not interested you stop believing in the team which I think I still believe in them but let's say you stop believing in them. So suddenly you're like, I don't really want this NFT. Maybe I can sell it to somebody who does believe in it. So suddenly this NFT, because obviously Strongbox has gone up like 10 times since its original inception. I think it was like at a coin price of like $20 and now it's like at $100 or something like that. And so there's still like an increase, a five times increase. Uh, and so this NFT gives a boost. And if somebody believes in the project, they would probably happily buy this NFT over. But because there's a five times increase, when you're selling this NFT, you could probably sell it for five times more or even more than that, than what you originally bought it for. And so that's how you have also utility NFTs. Now, that's an example that I gave you. And what, what I kind of learned from the conference where I was at is that we are literally in the Wild West. We're, we're kind of like inventing things as they come along, just like those clubs or uh, exclusive events had these membership cards. They're literally just making things up as we go along. The difference is that with the blockchain, you have scale at and like millions of people at your disposal. So it could be pretty much what I just mentioned and a utility NFT that boosts your rewards. It could be a membership card that gets you to exclusive events, but it could be so much more. And the more creative people are with it, the, the more utility you might find out that you can get out of an NFT. So there's definitely a huge future ahead. And that's kind of how I found out what an NFT is and what the future of it is. And is it worth investing? I guess that's the last question I tend to get. I'm a bit worried about investing in uh, NFTs at this point, mostly because I don't have a lot of budget to invest in crypto. And so burning myself on the art part of the whole thing, I'm not 
into art as much. I am an artist in the sense that I make movies in my main company, but I, I just don't really like that part and I'm not uh, following it too much. There's too much hype around it for me. The utility NFTs, because I also have an event company, uh, I, I see there's a lot of value there, but, but the truth is that it is too early right now to make a corporate part of it. Uh, is there a, a space for a creative person to figure you know the utility out for a corporate world 100% I just don't think that I am kind of smart enough to figure that part out so I'd rather just follow the space along and the moment I see something I would probably jump on it really quickly so what am I trying to say if you don't have a lot of money probably you shouldn't invest in NFTs there's a lot of risk uh, involved with it but if you're incredibly creative you're good with tech you understand blockchain there's a huge future ahead if you're like me, just follow it, follow it along, follow some creative people, and when they find something relevant, just make sure to jump on it right away. With that being said, thank you for seeing this video, and I'll see you in the next one.